feet. As Mike. Illinois and the home whites ready to go. And the tip controlled by the Illini. You mentioned Lowell Hamilton playing soft the last two games. Two points and two rebounds, and that has earned him a spot on the bench. Weisinger will run the club. This is Bardo, who has also been starting of late. The last five games, he is not making mistakes, and here is the first turnover of the ball game. Everett Stevens, the Big Ten Player of the Week a week ago. They got to go inside the McCann. And they tried to, and Kuyava knocks it away. Ken Norman back to Everett Stevens. Stevens in the backcourt with Troy Lewis. I really like this backcourt. I rate him as one of the top five backcourts in the nation. Lewis and Stevens. Lewis downtown. Troy Lewis bombs away. It's 3-0. That's a rainbow jump shot. That is absolutely an NBA three-pointer. He shot that from 23-9. He's been hitting 43.8% of his shots from three-point range. His backcourt partner, Everett Stevens, has hit 10 in a row from that range. Stevens is a great defender, Mike. He's got long arms. He beats the club and block shots. Altenberger found himself open, missed the shot, the rebound, went to McCants, who's averaging almost six boards a game. And it's an offensive foul on Todd Mitchell. Oh, yes, defensive player planted perfectly. Altenberger takes the charge, squares his body. He was the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten two years ago, and he's my choice this year, even though Gary Grant's getting a lot of noise about being the best defensive player in the league. And the basket is overruled. Bardo misses the shot. Stevens gets the loose ball. Ahead to Lewis. Illinois back well on defense. Doug Lee, the hero of the first game, a three-pointer that sent it into overtime. And Lee will try a three-pointer here. Two of those, and it's 6-0 Purdue. Doug Altenberg is playing off Doug Lee, and I don't understand that. You would think to try to deny him the ball. He's a good stationary shooter. And back comes Illinois. Ken Norman with his first two. They call him the snake. He's absolutely a dominant player, the best senior power forward in America. He's getting a challenge, though, for that ranking from Armin Gilliam out of Nevada, Las Vegas. Lee kicks it off to Mitchell. Acrobatic move for Mitchell. They expect him to be a star, Mike. He has a tendency not to really live up to his great potential. What an absolute superb baseline drive. Norman has oh, nice. got to Bardo. Excellent move without the ball by Bardo. He does a great job of cutting down the lane. He's a 6'5 rush. He gained the starting position against Ohio State when they blew out the Buckeyes in the second half. They like him because he hasn't been making very many mistakes in the backcourt. Mitchell, offensive-minded, line drive jumper, hits him. I love him. I really believe he can be an outstanding pro prospect. He's got the great body. As we take a look at the man-to-man -man defense, look at the pressure on the ball. A lot of intensity reflects Gene Cady, a real fighter and scrapper. Norman inside from Altenberger, missed the shot. Altenberger kept it alive. Knocked her off the hands of an Illinois player. Now take a look at Norman. A little spin move. And now watch the backdoor cut. Here he comes. Dump it. Freeze it. He spots his teammate running a backdoor cut. Simply cutting behind the defensive player. Good move by Bardo. Purdue has hit four of its first six shots. Illinois now two of seven. Norman certainly didn't look good on that shot right there. Came up with a little A-B, a little air ball. You talk about two tough competitors, Altenberger and Lee. Two tough kids physically. There they are matched up with each other. Lee for three. Missed that one. And Cuyano takes down the rebound. He just takes a lot of space inside, great size. They just want him to get some glass like he just did. They want to bring it back to Altenberger's side. Weisinger, great dump off to Cuyano. Really excellent creativity by Weisinger. He made that play happen for the big fella. Altenberger right on top of Lee, knocked it away. Mitchell dumps it back up for Lewis. They put a lot of pressure on the ball, try to deny on the wings. McCants. Yeah. And oh, a nice job on defense, and here comes Weisinger. Hesitation move, Mike. Excellent utilization of what we call the hesitation move. 
He freezes the defender, and then he blows right to the goal with the ball. Watch Weisinger right now. He's going to demonstrate the hesitation dribble. Now, here he comes. He freezes the defender. Little stutter step, and then he blows by him. All he needed was that little hesitation, and he gets right by Stevens. An excellent move going to the goal. Showtime. Oh, no. He does oh. way. It looked like he couldn't make up his mind. Dickie wanted to jam it and then thought he'd play it safe. He lost his stride. We're tied at 10 with 12.33 to go in the first half. And a sixth man has arrived here in Champaign. Assembly Hall. Kip Jones, number 30, into Purdue's lineup. They leave him open from 16, and he didn't want the shot. Lewis, way short. They're not getting really good ball movement and coming up with a good shot. Their shot selection is not what Gene Cady, I'm sure, likes. Troy Lewis, Purdue's leading scorer, didn't look real good on that one. Alton Berger, and it wouldn't fall for him. Tony Jones, the freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, is playing the point right now. That's him, Tony Jones, to Lee. Back to Kip Jones. Tony Jones. His first two, and Purdue regains the lead. That was a clinic on how to move the basketball. That was reminiscent of the olden days when the Knickerbockers won the national championship with that group of Bill Bradley and Dave DeBuscher, coached by Red Holzman. Excellent ball movement. And and here's the foul on Jones. That'll be one on him. Bardo Gill is now in there for Illinois. Here is a three-pointer by Altenberger. And Altenberger, one of the most prolific three-point shooters in the country. He's at 50% out of 122 coming in. I don't think you can zone Illinois for a great deal of time. Not with shooters like Altenberger and Weisinger. They both can drill the jump shot. Altenberger has missed both three-point opportunities tonight. Overall, 0 for 4 from the floor. Good play by Gill, who is very quick. Oh, nice pass. Ahead to Altenberger. That may have been partially blocked by Tony Jones, and Purdue comes out with it. Jones, an outstanding athlete. He's an outstanding track performer. He's got superb quickness. Crowd really upset. They wanted a travel call. This place is a madhouse, Mike. It's just like when we went down to West Lafayette. We did that game, Purdue and Iowa. Troy Lewis. Unable to get untracked. He's been very streaky as a shooter this year. They expected him to have a big, big year. He's been up and down a little bit in his score. He is their 10th place all-time scorer. That's an excellent pass against the zone, a skip pass. Gill to Altenberger, and Altenberger is fouled underneath. Weisinger back in the Illinois lineup. He and Gill will be at the guards. This kid's dad played for Illinois. Comes from a family where basketball was part of his life. He's got a great body, tremendous head. He told me today the three toughest players he's had to guard in his collegiate career. You ready for this? Kenny Walker. Kenny Walker was number two. Number three was Hobson. And number one, Lenny Bias. Tony Jones running the club. Number 25 dumps it low to Arnold. Didn't get the bounce, and Altenberger, as he so often does, gets the loose ball. He's Illinois has missed six straight shots from the floor. They could use a bucket to take the lead. Weisinger. <laughs> Hamilton. That's the second one that wouldn't fall for him. Oh, look at Dan that Altenberger called for the foul. Yeah, he climbed the back, but what an effort. Like, don't tell me we got another one like the other night when we were in Indiana, Wisconsin, in that triple O tier. The only thing they didn't do sometimes in that one was uh, issue weapons. McCants looking inside. We're still tied at 12. Only 12 points apiece. We played 12 minutes. Stevens is off. Oh, and nice that ball effort. was tipped in by Dudley. Dudley. We call him one of the old Kurt Rambis players with the great tip. The left hand, a transfer from out of Texas A&M. You like to talk about your all-bricklayer team, Dick. Illinois shooting 5 out of 18 right now. They can put an addition on your house. They're too good. I like that line. You're not supposed to make all those lines. That's supposed to be my job. You'll right? get credit for it. Oh, look at those legs. Look at Once legs. again, Hamilton finds a lid on the basket, but Norman follows. Norman with a great second effort. He wants the foul. Henson. Hamilton's got the great body, the right, great legs. He was rated as one of the top five high school players in America coming out of Providence St. Mel in the Chicago area. Uh, he just suffered from some bad luck tonight. He's had three follow shots that were halfway down and wouldn't stay. 
traveling. Good look at Gene. Katie has done a great job in West Lafayette. All he needs is the visibility of a Final Four because he's one of the great coaches who a lot of people in America are unaware of. Hamilton finally got one. He's coming to play tonight, Mike. You can see that intensity. You can see that he really wants it. I think he got a little message from Lou Henson, who placed him on the bench, and he said, hey, I got too much pride to be sitting here as an all firing member. In case you joined us late, that was a reference to uh, Kuyama starting the ball game. In place of Hamilton, and now we've got the foul. That's two on Everett Stevens. Todd Mitchell also has two for the Boilermakers. Stevens is a great pro prospect. He's got long arms. He's 6'3". He's a tough defender. He can shoot the ball, and he's made the adjustment to play in the point guard position. Number 21. Norman back to Weisinger, back to Ken Norman. Started by Arnold. Arnold's a physical player trying to lean on Norman. Weisinger, tough shot. It won't go for him. Good rebound inside by Doug Lee. Dean Katie going with size, playing Arnold and the cans together. Troy Lewis, who hasn't been able to get on track. Here's the ball inside by Arnold. Now we got a jump ball situation. He lost it, but tied up Weisinger. Possession goes to Purdue. Well, Purdue has turned the ball over seven times so far tonight. Illinois has done a great job of protecting and only three turnovers. They run the motion game where you pass and you go away. Notice when they make a pass, they go away from the ball. Here's Lewis. He'll make a pass entry. He'll try to go away. There he is. Nice pass to Arnold, but great defense inside to knock it away. And Arnold was a force to travel after he lost the ball. Here the ball goes inside. A little... Now he goes after the loose ball to get him for a little travel, Mike. I missed that one. I missed it, too. So did Gene Cady, who was really letting a couple of the officials have it. And an errant pass picked off by the Boilermakers. Both clubs are really not playing well offensively. Not, not making that one extra pass to get the good shot. Good move by McCants. They got it where he likes it. They got to get it to the big horse. He's one of my old wide bodies. I told him the other day, I'm picking you on an all-star team. Larry Finch of Memphis State, who's my rookie of the year in coaching, would be the coach of the wide bodies. This is Gill. We tied at 16 with 4.59 to go in the first half. Both clubs do a good job of doubling up on a basketball. Once it goes to the baseline, you can rest assured you're going to be double teamed. This is Tony Jones, who's gotten a lot more playing time as the season wears on. A good-looking freshman out of Fort Wayne to Arnold. They're trying to develop some depth. They need it to play where they want to play. They want to get to that final four. They've got to have at least eight players, and that's Jones, Arnold, and Kip Jones coming off the bench. Tough pass that time, and it's picked off by Hamilton. Great pass to Gill. 409 to go in the half. Illinois by two. You're right. The bottom line is he did get away with it. And that's all that counts. They've really contained Lewis. They're really playing him tough. They got to go to the horse. That's the guy. We talked about the keys early in the game. They got to establish a power game inside to Melvin McKent. Got to come back to the zone. Good move by Katie because they're not shooting the ball well. Lewis only has three points on that one three-point shot. McCants has six. Right? I would get it to Altenberger for the shot. I'd rotate it and swing it to Altenberger on the wing. Step it up on the wing there right there. For three. Rimmed out on him. Altenberger not with much luck on the long ball tonight. They designed the shot that they would like to get. They got it right in the hands of their shooter. He didn't miss. I was shooting around with him today at the shooter round, and he didn't miss his shot. Well, he's 0 for 6 tonight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, a little showtime. Skywalker, here comes the sixth man. Should have been walking by. What a contact, the jump ball call. What about a walking violation, Mike? Should have been a walking violation. We've got three minutes and three seconds to go in a very low scoring but intense first half. Gene Kennedy's going to stay with the zone until Illinois can prove they can shoot the ball. Now we know that Altenberger can shoot it and so can Weisinger. Pretty pass inside to Hamilton. Good pump fake, and again, he doesn't get the break. The shot won't go for him, but Doug Lee gets the foul. Hamilton has struggled with the free throw line, as you saw. Misses the first. He's the nicest kid going, but they all believe he's a little bit soft. He's not tough enough physically. In high school, he was able to get away at the level he played with his great legs and his bounce off the floor. Missed them both. Lewis brings it down. He's only had the one three-point shot. He's their leading scorer at 18.9 a game. They've really done a job shutting him down defensively. 
Bartles playing him very tough at 6'5. Get his yard a right there. Bounce pass. Good defensive anticipation by Bardo. Really locked it up, Troy Lewis. Bardo at 6'5 uh, can either play the small forward or the big guard. See, Bardo's got to drive it right in the air and then kick it to the wings. You got to drive it right down the seam at the double. See, now he's got to drive it. Now he can't hold the ball like that. You got to drive it at the top two guys and pinch the two and then kick it to the wing. He's given up his dribble too early. See, see right there. Blackwell back to Bardo. Shot clock is at 16 seconds. Blackwell's a real enigma. He's a kid that scored 28 and 24 against Michigan and Michigan State. See, that's what he did in high school. And he missed again. That's what he did in high school, Mike. He just jumped and jumped and jumped. He was blessed with those great wheels, and he was able to score. He's playing aggressively tonight. He certainly is, and if there wasn't a personal lid on the basket for him, he'd have a dozen by now. Jones, jump ball situation. Another great defensive play by Illinois inside. I don't know why a guy would want to blow the whistle in this league. It is tough. With these yeah. coaches on the sideline chewing you up like the pac man I mean, they just come after you every play. they got to love it. And they are an important part of this game. Doug Lee gets it to Tony Jones, who's had a lot of minutes here in the first half. Mitchell. Lewis guarded by Bardo. Got by him this time. Pretty move by Troy Lewis, and bodies fly. No one rotated over at all, Mike, defensively, and that's a no-no. you got to rotate over from the help side and close down the driving angle. Illinois with the basketball and the two-point lead. Ken Norman. Oh, that's an excellent what we call the zigzag move. To the post and to the weak side. Bardo forces this one, comes up short. Loose ball, Doug Lee. And Purdue will can hold for a shot. But Mitchell, I don't think, is going to. Loose ball, Blackwell. Two on one, got to make the play right here. Got to give it back. Yes, sir. Well the key there, Mike, is to stay a little wider than the lane. So one guy cannot play two people. If you get close together, one guy can shut down the two offensive players. I mean, they are knocking people down against the screen. There is contact everywhere. And there'll be contact here again Sunday when Indiana comes in. They got a date with Ohio State Wednesday. Clock is down to six seconds, and they'll call Bardo for holding inside. We have Bardo with three personal fouls. Jones misses the shot. Boy, is there contact inside. Three seconds. Trying to get the last shot. Weisinger good at the goal. Stevens gives it off to Lee. Back to Lewis and to Stevens. Good pass inside to McCants. McCants had it knocked away and stolen by Norman. Good defensive play. Got him as he was going up. Altenberger. Norman. A lot of contact, and they finally blow the whistle and call one on McCants. They got to blow it early in the half here so you can have some rhythm to this game and have some basketball. As you look at Gene Cady, he changed his outfit. This afternoon, he had a nice black jacket on, looked beautiful. I said, you really look short. Look at the play inside for the deuce. Good out-of-bounds play. Illinois now with a six-point lead, 19-15 to go in the ball game. Perfect execution on the ball coming in from him. Out-of-bounds. Oh, he's got to hit this open shot. Way short, couldn't pull the trigger as Mitchell just short-armed it. That's a man rebound right there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Get a timeout! Get a T.O., Gene Katie! They're ready to rock and roll here! Get a T.O., baby! Purdue, a game behind Indiana in the loss column. This is a critical game for them. Illinois with four losses in the Big Ten trying to play spoiler. They're trying to save some pride. They want to beat one of the heavyweights. They have not beaten Purdue, Indiana, or Iowa. Go everywhere as Stevens missed. Oh, he's no. going to be gold. He's got to score the basket. Score the basket. They will call a foul on Gene Cady is absolutely oh. outraged. These officials are missing a lot of calls. I don't blame Cady. Gene Cady is inviting a technical. He is really going after one of the officials who was standing in front of the Purdue bench and did not make the call on the goaltender. He told me today, he said the officials in this league aren't calling enough technicals. They're allowing the coaches to run rampant on the sidelines. Lee got the bounce on the second one. It's back to a six-point game. You can only hang on the rim in protecting yourself 
as you getting fouled in the attempt to score. The only hang is shooting and getting fouled on the play. Weisinger against Stevens, and Stevens commits the foul and then looks at the referee like, all I did was knock him down. And Weisinger, the senior out of Peoria, will go to the line. He's an 85% free throw shooter. You look at Illinois, I really believe they've overachieved most of the year. They lost four quality players last year. They lost Winters, Douglas, Mintz, and also uh, a kid by the name of Welch, a 6'9 player. They've beaten Pittsburgh. They've beaten some really solid teams in addition to their record in the Big Ten. They've lost four games in the Big Ten by a total of 12 points, one heartbreaker after another. 22-point lead here, 61-39 against Iowa, and ended up losing that game. And that will take a lot of starch out of it. Stevens tries the alley up, and Altenberger is right there to pick it off. Oh, great defense. Yeah, he anticipated well. He saw the ball in his man, which is a must defensively. You don't fool Altenberger very often. Hill got it into Hamilton, and Hamilton called for the offensive foul, pushing off. Stevens trying to get something started. This is Lee. Good pass inside. Loose ball after contact. Out of bounds, and McCants lost it. Weising, Altenberg. Bad pass there. Yeah, both, both teams are really telegraphing their passes. Purdue really not running the ball up the court quickly. That time they did, and they scored. They ran it up to their designated fast break, got it to their shooter on the wing, and they converted. 29-24, 16-52 to go in the ballgame. Altenberger for three. Got it! And the foul inside. Well, Illinois will get the ball out of bounds after making the three-pointer, and Kuyava comes back in. They had a chance for a six-point possession before That's Purdue touches points. the ball. Get it into Weisinger. It's 32-24. The lead is eight. They're in a one-four set. There it is. Certainly three more. tonight they are beating Purdue to the basketball 34 24 the lead is climbed to 10 with 16 22 left they need a three-point shot out of either Lee or Lewis to stop this mow Stevens just inside the line and Everett Stevens gets it Stevens on Weisinger See a lot of balance on the floor. Excellent screening inside. Kuyava missed it badly, but Ken Norman with great inside position on Lee. No one lays a body on Norman, and he gets open for the offensive board. Now we take a look at the defense of Illinois. Nothing tricky. Straight head-to-head, -head, man to man defense, fighting over screens. Jumper short by Stevens. Good rebound inside to Arnold. Arnold was going to accept the volleyball scholarship to UCLA. One of the great volleyball players of all time, Keith Erickson, played there. Lee draws the block. He's one of my old Kurt Rambis players, a kid that's very physical, tough, gets maximum out of his body. There you see the numbers on Lee. Lee only had one basket last time, the big three-pointer to tie up the game in OT. Should have never happened. Lou Henson should have ordered his kids to foul. Three points up, four seconds in the game. He allowed him to shoot the ball. I disagreed with him on that philosophy, and I told him that today. He said, well, I'm not so sure. Altenberger and Lee matched up, and Lee cut him off at the baseline. Kuyaba. Nice move! If they get anything out of the big guy from West Germany, the drop step, the slam jam man, look at him, he's excited. He just shocked everybody with that one. A he great shocked move. Me. They told me no offensive ability inside. Very limited offensively. And I'm going to tell you something. That was a major lead move to the goal. Yes, it was. And Lou Henson would like to see that about ten times a game. Mitchell had it blocked. But the foul will be on kill. Mitchell will go to the line. 71% shooter. Got the roll. Mitchell and Troy Lewis visited the UCLA campus and they were thinking seriously of going to UCLA. Became buddies and now are roommates over in West Lafayette at Purdue. Weisinger, good play to save it. Goes into Gene Cady's lap. Purdue's got a 
shut them down defensively. They really got to do something with their defense if they want to get out of here with the win. Ken Norman. Line drive, Jeffrey got it. He's got 17-foot range. He's really worked on improving his perimeter skills. He's always been a score of horse around the boxes inside. It looks like he is going to be the first player ever to play for Lou Henson, averaging more than 20 points a game. The Snake has eight tonight. Crowd won the walk, didn't get it. Tony Jones back in there, Lewis for three. He's been off tonight, can't hit this one. Kuyava with a rebound. They're getting a positive game out of Kuyava, and that's a surprise here. Altenberg missed the shot after contact. Norman missed the follow, but we've got the foul. Ken Norman, even with his team only having 40 points, having a good night, eight points, nine rebounds. You talk about some of the outstanding seniors who are power forwards. You talk about Armin Gilliam, who sparked Nevada Vegas. What a comeback, down 19, and a comeback and win by 12. Look at the hand right now. Kendall Gill. Gill gets a great hand as he goes out. Horace Grant's also an outstanding power forward prospect oh, out yeah. of Clemson. Now here goes the face guard pressure. They're trying to keep the ball. Right now they're going to funnel it. They're trying to funnel it to the sideline. Notice the defensive player. He's trying to force him to the sideline. See, he's driving him to the sideline. They run a curl move. Curl move simply means you come from the baseline and you curl off a post player to the top of the circle. Illinois, great shooting in the second half. They have hit 7 of 10. Lewis trying to make something happen. Blocked by Kuyava. Kuyava again with a good rebound. Norman. Oh. Over, tried to overpass that basketball, trying to look a little bit too spectacular. You wonder about Lewis being used to contact out there. He's been given a black eye, a uh, black eye, and a cut under the other eye in two weeks. And they've all happened by his teammates. Looks like he's getting ready to fight Marvin Hagler. Kuyava gets the personal foul. Lewis had a good screen, moved inside it, and missed the shot. Bardo with a rebound. Altenberg. Oh, he's clobbered by Lee, although he helped initiate the contact. Altenberger will go to the line where he's two for two. You should have heard him today at the shoot around. He and I were out here alone before everybody came, and he just spoke in raving terms about Lenny Bias and what it was for him to try and check him. He said Lenny Bias was unstoppable, and now he's got to get ready later this week. He's got Hobson on Wednesday and then Alford on Sunday. He, uh, he draws a lot of tough assignments, doesn't he? Well, he's considered to be the best defender in the league. There he is, drawing a charge. No call on that play. And Stevens gets the ball across. There wasn't as much contact on that play as it looked like. Illinois tonight with 14 steals in this game. That's they're, unbelievable. They're really playing tough man-to-man -man defense. They're denying on the wings. They're helping out defensively. They're very physical. The officials allow them to play, and that's right to their style. Lee for three. Won't go. Rebound to Norman. He is some kind of rebounder. He is a Windex man. He just cleans the glass, Mike. Illinois with a chance to build on a 13-point lead. They haven't been good down the stretch. They've really struggled in the last five minutes of games against heavyweight teams. Betty Rock flashing all kinds of signals on the sideline. Lou Henson and his staff. Now you tell me what the 12th play is. I have no idea. That's it. Altenberger says forget about the 12th play. No cuts, no screens. Let me shoot the jumper. And Lou Henson yells, I love it, Doug. Forget about the 12th play. Doug Altenberger wants this game so badly, he missed the technical at the end of overtime in the first game that could have tied it up. And Doug Lee answers at the other end. But the lead had gone to 16. Biggest of the ball game. They know no lead is safe this year. But Illinois looks sharp here in the second half. They're one of the heavyweights. You look at that league. There are four heavyweights. There'll be six teams from this league in the NCAA. Norman tried to keep it alive, and they're going to call Ken Norman for coming down the lane. McCants wants the ball. Got it back. I like McCants. I just don't think that they create enough shots for him by moving the basketball, reversing it, so he can get people on his hip. McCants has six. The lead is cut back to 12. We're nearing the 10-minute mark. Altenberger just had to dump it off, and Hamilton picked it up. Illinois had a number of bad spurts in games, which have allowed teams to get back in the game against him. All it takes is a three or four minute, minute drought. Out of the 
corner Gill. That's the first shot he's missed tonight. That's an air ball. Here comes one of the first times. But they're able to get their transition game up for a layup. If another score comes, I would get a timeout if I were Lou Henson. Lewis ahead of the pack. That is only the fourth field goal that Purdue has scored in the second half. The 13 out of 31 shooting in this ball game. They're in their motion game at our half court game. Pass and go away. Hamilton with another offensive rebound. And now Lee's got it. They score right here. I would get a timeout. They're beating them down the court now. There's a, a foul. Chance foul by Bardo. And that will be four on Bardo. So McCants will go to the line. You know they're not getting back defensively when a member of my old wide body beats them down the floor. I mean, Melvin McCants beat them down the floor. McCants hits this one. Now seven points. I would get a timeout right after this conversion because it would be a run of six points. They've had a history of allowing leads to disappear. His team needs to be talked to just from a confidence standpoint because you start to believe you're going to lose the lead. McCants, not a good free throw shooter, but he hit them both, and the lead is cut to eight with 9.07, and Purdue starting to make a run. Lou Henson and I would disagree. I'll tell you what, man. He's trying to wait one more minute and use a TV timeout. They've got to forget those TV timeouts. Altenberger for three. Gill with a rebound. Had it stripped underneath, and Lewis takes it. Altenberger's really going up with too many three points. Look, they're beating him down the court now. He's got to get a timeout. He better forget that TV timeout, Lou Henson. It's a sellout plus 16,667 here tonight at Assembly Hall in Champaign. Here's where Ken Norman's got to be an All-America. They need a bucket down on the inside. Kuyama from 16. That's probably not the shot Lou Henson wants. No, you're not looking for that, but Ken Norman's got to come to the ball and want it. Lewis, all the way underneath. He creates the foul. It will be on Kuyama. And Purdue all at once seems to have found its second win. That's three straight times they've beaten Illinois down court. Lewis averaging 18.9 points a game, has nine tonight. They've shut the crowd down also. They've taken the sure six man. I think there's a lot of fear. I see a lot of people's eyes popping at that time saying, do we have enough time? Just like when they had that 22-point lead with Iowa. Well, you lose a 22-point lead at home when you're an excellent ball club that sticks in your mind for a long time, especially in the second half. Well, Purdue has scored the last 11, and they've done it without the three-point shot. They're, they got to get Lewis free for a jump shot off the screen. They go inside to McCants. He kicks it back. See, Lewis has got to learn how to read screens and run his man into a screen. Bad pass there. Here comes Illinois. It's a three on two. Altenberger behind Stevens. What a move. That was a big score. They needed that score to stop the momentum. They got the crowd back in the game. Good look by Altenberger. That was a great catch. Yeah, great hands by Blackwell. Excuse me, that was Glenn Blackwell. I said Stevens. He's 21 on the other side. Blackwell looked like Ozzie Smith. Mitchell just inside the line. Big bucket there. Cuts it back to five. All of a sudden, you see a little rhythm to the Purdue offensive game. There was no rhythm at all earlier in their offensive game. Purdue with those couple of fast break baskets finally got on the board in that category. Illinois has scored 14 points on the fast break. Purdue only four tonight. Notice how they play off of Diava. They let him play outside. He's got to hang around the basket and use his great size as a tipper. Well, the six minutes and 39 seconds left. Norman. Bullet pass inside and Blackwell fires and hits. Blackwell can either be sensational or he can be non-existent. He had a tremendous game against Michigan. 28 points and he wrapped up Gary Grant. Had a great game against Michigan State. He's from Highland Park, Michigan. Played for Donald Percival, one of the better high school coaches in the state of Michigan. Mitchell faked it outside that time. Collision, basket counts, and it's an offensive foul on Mitchell. But the bucket does go. The rule is if the contact happens before the shot, there is supposed to be no basket. 5.59 to go. The Illinois bench has outscored Purdue's reserves 20 to 2 tonight. That's one of the problems all year long with Purdue. Lack of inconsistency off that bench. Excellent starting five. There's a whistle away from the ball. It's going to be on Blackwell. 76% free throw shooter on the season. 
Missed it. That's a big miss. He's not shooting the ball well. He's been up and down as a shooter. Had a chance to cut into a five-point lead. And here's a steal. They got to convert here. He's got to hit the trail. Oh! Weisinger just reached in and says, give me that. He had to hit the trailer, but there was no communication from the guy coming from the rear. Weisinger on the other end. It won't go for him, and a big rebound to Everett Stevens. What a defensive play by Weisinger. Lewis will try it again, and he's fouled by Ken Norman. Illinois with 16 steals tonight. That's amazing. That's just aggressive play. I like Blackwell. I think Blackwell has outstanding athletic ability. Lewis. Got this one. It's 50 to 46. The lead is down to four. That's Tony Jones, number 25, and he picks up Pardo, who's working with four fouls. Pardo forced that one up. Offensive rebound, Hamilton. He's been all over the boards tonight, and that's happened almost every time. He can't get it in. He's got to develop a touch. He's throwing it up with no backspin, no rotation. He's throwing up a knuckleball. Arnold got a break as that thing ping-ponged back and forth. Stevens jumper in and out. Norman swinging those elbows. Ooh, that's an NBA rebound. That's a man's body. They clear out in a hurry, don't they? They got to look for Norman a little bit offensively down in the post. Arnold can't handle him down in there if he gets ball movement. Altenberger just inside that line. Doug Lee was trying to help out on defense and couldn't get back in time. The two money players right now for Illinois have to be Altenberger. Oh, what a screen! Arnold set a screen and Bardo. That was almost a TKO in the first round. Mitchell with a chance for a three-point play. He could cut the lead to three. And does. They've done it. They're crawling back without that jump shot by Lewis. You just know it's a matter of time before he's going to stick a jumper. Now this has been this way almost every Monday night. 4.07 to go in the ballgame. Three-point lead. The Big Ten's been amazing all year long. Hamilton won't go. Bottle wouldn't go. Oh, Bardo was right there, and it wouldn't fall for him. Bardo's a good-looking flash. Mitchell, and it's down to one. They're getting good shots in their transition game. They're not getting the layup, but they're getting the secondary phase of the running game, the pull-up jump shot. Mitchell with a big second half is up to his average 15 points a game. I would get a timeout if I were Lou Henson. His Hamilton had it timeout. Three on two. Purdue with a chance to take the lead. Sneak Gotta get a timeout, Lou Henson. I would have gotten it earlier with the lead. Psychologically, you'd like your players to know you're on top. Todd That's Mitchell has been the big scorer for Purdue. He has 15. So here goes the adjustment by Gene Cady. He rotates out of a man-to-man. -man. He's playing consistently to a 1-2-2 zone. Altenberger for three. He's a clutch player. He's a money player. He's a tough kid. He missed the big technical against this club last time. But he is a fighter and a scrapper. He has had eight game-winning baskets this year for the Illini. McCants. Good angle inside. They got the good 45-degree angle on the entry. McCants spreads his body well down on the box inside. They have a tough time handling McCants. McCants has a dozen. Altenberger has taken the scoring lead now for Illinois. He has 14 points. See, here's where Ken Norman's got to be a man. He's got to make the play. I would rather see if I'm coaching Ken Norman get his big butt down on the box and get him the ball down low and let him take the ball to the goal where he's going to get fouled rather than isolate him on a perimeter for a one-on-one -on -one play. He only has 10 points tonight, averaging 21, Dick. Some say his stock has dropped a little bit, but he hasn't played as effectively as he was earlier in the year. Two minutes to go in a 55-55 tie. That is the shot clock that you're looking at in the lower left of your screen. Three-pointer. Trust. Just a matter of time. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You can't keep this kid down. He's too good a shooter. He's a streaky shooter, but he was due. Law of averages were on his side. Good two-man game to get him free for that shot. Purdue 58-55 over Illinois after they were down by 16. A loose ball knocked away. Weisinger couldn't get it to Altenberger. Illinois' five-on-five five play, not very effective. If you were to chart them offensively and take an offensive efficiency rating, they wouldn't have a high one here in the second half. Purdue may have dodged the biggest bullet of the season if they win this one. 
They need this win. Remember, they're one game behind Indiana, and they have a date with the Hoosiers on Thursday in West Lafayette. Trying to use as much of the clock as possible. Lee! They smuck it for Lee. It's a five-point lead. They smell the W. Right now, they got to go to Altenberger. There he is, looking for the three. For three. No! It's and like a big out. rebound to McCants. McCants had it stolen from him. And Blackwell puts it in, cuts the lead to four. I like Blackwell. He's a good athlete. He's got a touch. He knows how to score. Purdue having trouble getting it in. They'll steal oh, they it steal again. It. What looked like lights out if he hits this one. Watch oh, out. Yes. You talk about a quick turnaround. Get the timeout. They should get the timeout. They do get it. Remember, after a score, you have the liberty to run the baseline. Even though the official's handling the basketball to him. Normally, when an official handles the ball, so he can run that baseline. And they manage to get it in, and Lewis is fouled. Jeff Arnold at 6'9", 230, number 43 for Purdue back in there. And El Toro, Toro Calvary. This might mean the Big Ten right here, because if they lose tonight, they're two behind Indiana. Front end of a one and one, and Lewis buries it. They need this one right now. I could see the general and all the Indiana fans. Steve Orford right now at home saying, throw up a brick right now, and then Altenberger win it at the buzzer. This would give his club a three-point lead, and does. 23 seconds left. Look out for Altenberger. That's I would, the guy they want. See, here's where I disagree with strategy. I talked to Katie about this today. I wouldn't let them shoot that three-pointer. There it is. I wouldn't let him shoot that three-pointer, Mike. I told him today I would foul. Let him shoot the two. They got plenty of time taking the ball at midcourt after running the ball up to get a good shot with eight seconds. Clock doesn't start until the ball is touched by Stevens. Stevens there it is. Has I would it. go inside. I would go inside with it. Altenberger lost the rebound. We'll go overtime. I still don't understand the strategy, and it's not only Gene Cady. It seems to be almost universal. It is. Let the guys shoot the three-pointer rather than foul. And I agree with you. I disagreed with the general, and you know I think so much of his coaching ability. And I told him head-to-head, -head, I said, Bob, I really believe he got a foul in that situation. Illinois has been in overtime twice this year. Lost both. Purdue is 1-0. That was against Illinois. Lewis just threw that one up in the air. Mitchell offensive rebound. Got the follow. Good offensive rebound by Mitchell. Normally, statistically, Mike, if you were to check the results of overtime games, they usually favor the home team. Mitchell has 17 points, the leading score for Purdue. Great pass by Kuyava inside. And Blackwell is mud. Fouls on McCants, his third. Blackwell, eight points. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Has not been starting. No, he hasn't been inconsistent for him. Yeah, he's been up and down. He's been an enigma because he has a lot of potential, a lot of talent. Anytime you can score 54 points in one week, you got some talent. Hits them both. Blackwell in with 10, and we're tied at 65. Leading scorers in the ballgame, Altenberger and Mitchell, both with 17 points. This is Mitchell into McCants. Oh, I like oh, he lost the ball. Well, the ball slipped out of his hands. Stevens. He, Stevens hits the open jump shot. The ball slipped out of McCants' yep. hands, but he did an excellent job of using his body to get free on the interior. I think Kennedy just embarrassed the daylights out of him. Made a great fake to get open <laughs> and up, and the ball went the other way. He said, where are you? 67 to 65. I'll tell you a guy that's been disappearing, Kenny Norman. He's got a, he has disappeared. Altenberger has it. Norman almost lost a handle on it. Back to Kuyava. Tried to hand it to Norman and lost it. Ken Norman down the stretch has not played like a solid goal All-American. Hasn't played like a guy that has taken the game over, a la Danny Manning or Reggie Williams. Those guys make things happen late in the game. Two-point ball game, Purdue with the lead and the basketball. 3.15 to go in overtime. That's the shot clock in the lower left of your screen. They run their motion game. They pass and they squeeze away. Tough pass that Mitchell tried, and it's picked off by Weisinger. Not a good look. To tie it, Tony Weisinger. Very quiet player, but an outstanding player. Gene Cady just absolutely furious because they did not get a shot in their half-court game. When you come up empty and don't get a shot with the possession, that'll drive a coach totally bananas. 
Stevens and Blackwell. Blackwell really playing physical defense against them. There's been about three bumps in the last couple of possessions. Mitchell off balance jumper. Altenberger rebound. Not getting the good shot out of their offense. It's one pass down the floor, down the box, taking a bad shot by Mitchell. Illinois has had quite a defensive show tonight. 19 steals. Hamilton has five. Weisinger has four. Once again, we'll show you the shot clock. Tipped away that time by McCants. We've seen a turnover by Illinois, a turnover by Purdue, because both guys have tried to make direct entries from the foul lane, a tough pass. They don't have the good angle. To get the good angle, you got to get it to the wing, where you get that good 45-degree angle on the entry. See, get it over to Stevens, and they had McCants. You've got to recognize that as a play. Lewis, tough shot, and Lewis has 18, make it 17 points. And his mom is here, and she's dancing in the aisles. Stevens showing some leadership, turned around and looked at his teammates and said, let's play some defense, baby. 69-67, Purdue by two. We're in overtime with a minute 37 and counting from Champaign, Illinois. You can cut that intensity here. You can just feel the electricity. Altenberger on Lee. Shot won't go up. Altenberger and Lee is down. Lou Henson begging, can't believe the call. Purdue with a two-point lead in the basketball. A minute 28 left. They do a good job out of the pressure attack, getting the ball to Stevens' hand, even though they didn't do that well late in the game, which forced this game to go to overtime. Look at the shot clock coming down. Now Gill is back in there, and he is guarding Stevens. See, I don't believe they can handle McCants in there. If they know how to swing the ball side to side and get some ball movement, eventually they can post up McCants down in that box. Purdue working on the clock. We're down to one minute on the game clock. You see the shot clock on your screen. Stevens for three. Oh, what a big play by Everett Stevens. And he shot it so calm, cool, and collective from out of Evanston, Illinois, and a real leader on the floor. Five-point lead, and Illinois back in a big hole. They hold up the 15 sign last time. That was Altenberger from the top of the circle. This time, it's Gill with a running one-hander. And Purdue's back in the driver's seat. Well, they're in boss right now. They're totally in command. He's hurt. He's hurt right now. He's going to get a timeout. There's the story we told you about earlier on Illinois. Those four Big Ten losses by a total of 12 points. One of those, they were up 22 against Iowa at home. In this game, they were up 16 over Purdue. See, I think people thought we were just trying to keep them here when they were up 16, and we said, hey, this team is known to play some bad sports. Now look at this. And Gill is fouled after he makes the steal. They're going to call it on Doug Lee. Tough situation for freshman Kendall Gill. He is only a 61% free throw shooter. Yeah, he doesn't have good rotation and follow through, but looked good right there. Big one there. Makes it a four-point game, 72-68. This one gets them within one long-range bucket. Yeah, this gets them within a one possession where they can tie the game. And they've got that chance. Now here comes the face guard pressure. They're trying to get the ball to Stevens. And Lee wanted a timeout. The official calls him out. That was a foul before the one official saying he called the timeout first, but Phil Bova said, no, I got the foul before. Now Stevens with nine points tonight goes to the line here. One and one. And got the shooter's roll. Remember, what takes precedent, whatever took place first, yes. that's the call, that counts. Stevens with 10. It is, again, a four-point lead. I would apply some pressure defensively after the score. I would put some pressure, just a token pressure, to make them work on bringing the ball up the court. They got to hit the deuce. See, right now, with a five-point deficit, you score two or three, it doesn't matter. It still needs two possessions. Weisinger makes it for three. Cuts it back to a two-point game at 74-72. You got to look to foul and trap aggressively. They've had 20 steals tonight. That's just absolutely incredible. They pop it loose. They got a foul on Altenberger. Mitchell, three out of three from the line tonight. 71% on the season, as you see. That makes it a three-point game. Just like football, Mike, so many games are won with your special teams. This, to me, is the special team making free throws like your punting game. You've got to convert these if you want to be a winner. This is the big one, and it goes a four-point lead with 13 seconds left. Stevens ran over. He was asking Katie, should I foul and not let him shoot the three-pointer? Weisinger for three won't go. And a little 
contact inside. We have a foul one and one with five seconds left. Look at Kenny now. He tries to be so calm. His assistant coaches look at the I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't believe it, he said. <laughs> I can't believe it. But I'll tell you what. Do you think there'll be any electricity Thursday night in West Lafayette? Oh. I'd do anything to be sitting at courtside. I'm going to be down at a poorly pavilion in UCLA, and I want to know what happened down here. It's academic. It's Purdue and Indiana Thursday. What a shootout that'll be. Altenberger hits another three-pointer at the buzzer. Doug Altenberger with 23 points, but Purdue wins it.